You've probably realized by now that in C++ there are strict rules about naming stuff. All the rules of scope revolve around naming your variables. You cannot have two variables of the same name in the same scope. The same rule applies to classes. You, cannot, you can't create two classes that have the same name. The same rule also applies to making functions. You cannot make two functions that have the same exact name. You are going to get a compiler error for that because the compiler will complain that it doesn't know which function to go to. When you call this function, does it go to this one or does it go to that one? It wouldn't know because they both have the same name. However, with functions, there is an exception which is very convenient called function overloading. Function overloading allows you to make as many functions as you'd like with the same name and the program will know exactly which one to call in each different situation. So for example, let's say we created a function called increment which will probably take a variable uh, usually we'd use a pointer of course but for clarity's sake we're just going to use a plain old variable by, rep by uh, passing by value for this particular illustration and so this function will probably take this variable that you passed into it and increment it by one. Excellent. Now you're thinking to yourself, hey, wait a minute, in my program, I'm not just going to want to increment integer variables. Sometimes I'm going to have to increment floating point variables. Or maybe sometimes I'm going to have to increment va member variables of my own type that I created. So until now, th you probably thought that the way to do this is to cre create different functions which will each have a different name like increment int and increment float etc for to be able to accommodate for all the different situations which you may come across in your program whenever you'll need to handle an integer or you'll need to handle a float etc however with function overloading this is not at all necessary and you can have many different functions of the same name and the program will automatically know which one exactly to call provided that you have the necessary conditions. The conditions are pretty simple. All you have to do is change the amount or the types of variables being passed into this function of the same name. So if this function takes in an integer and this one takes in a float, there you go. You made a valid overloaded function right over here. Or if you made this one take an integer and this one take two integers, that is also a good differentiation and this is a valid overloaded function. So the conditions are that they have to differ in the types, like this one should take int and this one should take float, or the amount. This one should take one variable and this one takes two variables. And once you have that condition, you can make as many functions of the same name as you'd like, and the program will know exactly which one to call at each specific situation in your program. For example, if in your program you're going to call the increment function, and you're going to pass in one variable, the program will know that you're calling this function over here, which expects just one variable. If you pass in two variables, the program will know you're calling this one. If you're passing in a floating point variable, the program will know that you're not calling this one that has integer or this one that has two integers, you're calling the increment function that takes a float. This is very helpful to make clean and easy to read code because this way anytime you need to increment something, all you're going to do is call the increment function passing in whatever it is you need and you know that whatever it is you passed into it will be taken care of as long as you made that definition of the function. So right now I can pass into this increment function a integer, two integers, a floating point variable, and it's all taken care of. I cannot pass into this function a object of a class ogre or soldier, for example, because I did not yet make a function increment that takes care of that kind of variable, of that kind of object. I'd have to go ahead and define such a function which may look something like this over here, passing in a object of the class soldier and then accessing its member variables to increment it. And now I could go ahead and pass into this function 
an object of that class, and it will be taken care of by the function that I made over here. So again, this is a very convenient way to make one clean solution for something that you need to get done, for example, increment some variable by one, instead of having 15 different function names for integer and float and soldier and whatever else you need to increment, you can just have one single name of a function, increment, and then you go ahead and you will define a different implementation of the increment function for each specific type that you will be passing in, or for each specific amount of variables that you'll be passing in. In the bodies of these functions, you can do whatever you'd like. Over here, of course, the obvious convenient thing to do would be to increment a variable by one, but you can go and type in whatever you'd like. Maybe for some reason, in the increment function that takes two integers, maybe you really want to decrement it by one using the minus minus operator instead of incrementing it for whatever reason. The point is that by making all of these different functions each one having a different type or a different amount of variables being passed into them, you can make one magic word, increment, to do anything you'd like for many different types and many different amounts of stuff passed into the function. One magic word can have many, many different implementations of what it does. This is a special functionality available to functions and also to functions that are part of a class. You can make member functions of the same name as long as the conditions meet about the amounts or types of variables passed into these member functions. The return type of all of these overloaded functions can be whatever you'd like. It could be void, it can be int, float, whatever you'd like it, the return type to be. Just keep in mind that the return type is not enough to differentiate between one overloaded function and another one. The only differentiation is in the parameter list, in the stuff that's passed into the function. Over there, you must make sure to have a good differentiation, which, as we said, is either the amount of variables or the types of variables passed into these functions. The return type, again, can be whatever you'd like, but it does not make a difference to make it overloaded or not. So that's pretty much all there is to it, so uh, you can try playing around with this a little bit and feel the power of just saying one magic word which can go ahead and execute any one of many different implementations of this function which you made, and the program will automatically know which one to choose. Oh yeah, and also, a function of the same name that has no parameters is also just as good to differentiate between one overloaded function and another one. And also, of course, passing a pointer is different than passing a variable itself. So that's also a good differentiation between one overloaded function and another one. Same thing is for references. Except that with references, there's a slight little problem. If you remember, we learned in the last video that when you pass a integer variable into a function that expects a integer reference, then it is convertible. The program will take the integer as a reference. So in such a case, if you make a integer and then you call this overloaded function and you pass in this integer, the program will not know for sure which one it should call. Should it call this function over here that takes the integer? Or should it call this function over here that takes a integer reference and it should convert the integer to be accepted as a reference. Of course, over here I'm using integer, but the same goes for any other type. So, do keep in mind that because of this particular issue, when you make an overloaded function that could take either the type itself or a reference to the type itself, that it will compile, this is valid C++ code, but you would only be able to call it, to call this, overloaded function in situations where it's obvious which function to call. Like in this situation, if you would pass a number itself into the function, then it would know to go to this one. Because this is definitely an integer number, and it is not, it's not at all an integer reference. So be careful around this specific situation. You might want to use pointers instead of references in that case because with references you will have a problem of ambiguity 
between two overloaded functions.